I'm starting to do Lagrangian mechanics in classical mechanics. And uh, I saw this problem that was kind of a lead up to the variational principle, and I thought I'd do it because I thought it looked fun. Uh, and, and so this is also a version of, of, you could also do this with Snell's law. So here's the situation. Let me explain the situation. Um, there are three different surfaces with and an, and an object can travel on those three surfaces with three different speeds, v1, v2, and v3. So I space these out as uh, x equals 0, 1, 2, 3 meters if you want to. I don't really care. Uh, and then the, the speeds, I picked uh, 1.7 and 1.3, just for fun. We can change those up. And so the question is, the question is, where should you aim for the transition points to get over to here, y equals y3 is 3 meters, in the least amount of time, right? Because if if this has the highest speed, I want to I want to use that to my advantage to go up as high as I can, right? Because I can go faster. If this was a, a slow speed, then I'd want to get across as fast as I can and then speed up more in the next one. So and we can change up the values and everything. Uh, so in Snell's law, if you just have two surfaces like that, then uh, you can just do a maximum problem. So you could calculate the time it takes to go through here, the time it takes to, to go through there, and vary this one parameter in the middle. But now I have two parameters. I can vary both of those, right? So both of those can change. And so which one gives the optimal, the minimum time, right? And I thought about this, and I thought it'd be fun to solve this in a unique way. I like to do unique things. So what I'm going to do is to set this up. I'm going to have these four points. These two are fixed, they can't move. I can only move these two points. And if I can do it for two points, I could do it for an infinite number of points, which is what we're doing in the variational principle. So the question is, how do I know which way to move these? Uh, I can definitely calculate the time, right? I can say, okay, the total time, let's do that. T is gonna be T1 plus T2 plus T3. And T1 is gonna be this distance so I can say V1 equals S1 over T1, or T1 equals S1 over V1. So what's this distance right here? S1 is gonna be equal to, well, I know the change in X and the change in Y, so I can say this is the square root of Y1 minus Y0, that's Y0 squared, plus X1 minus X0 squared, that's the distance. So and that distance is going to change as I move this up and down. And then I can do the same thing uh, for T2. T2 is S2 over V2. And then uh, S2 is going to be the square root of Y2 minus Y1 squared plus X2 minus X1 squared. So I can find all that stuff. I can calculate the time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate the time. I'm going to pick some spots for these. I'm just going to pick spots. And then I'm going to move these up and down with a, a random amount. So I'm going to move these up, a, up and down a random amount. And then I'm going to do calculate the time. If the new time is less than the old time, then I'm going to keep these points. If they're not, I'm not going to keep them. And then I'll just keep doing that again and again. So basically you can think of me shaking these around, right? And in fact, what I'm going to do is add a random number to each of these points, a random displacement to each of these points, and let it kind of evolve over time. Uh, and then, and so it'll be fun. It'll be good practice for our uh, use of lists and things like that, even though I'm only doing two points. Uh, so let's just jump into it. I've already started on the code because I wanted, to, I, I wanted to make an animated graph and I was doing that wrong. So let's go over here to the computer. I'm using Python. I'm going to give you the code. I've already set some stuff in. I told you that. Um, so here's the, the plot. So there's my first point. There's my last point. I just put the other points at zero, zero, right? So it just goes across, across, and then up to that one just because I had to. Uh, and, and so what I have so far is uh, this stuff is for the graph. Um, these are my, my X and Y values, right? So X is 0, 1, 2, 3. It's a list. If you have questions about lists, let me know. I have some details. I made a video about lists. Uh, and then these are my Y values to start with. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new Y value and compare the time for the old Y value. So I need, I need to have another list. It's empty right now. I'll fill it in later. F1 data, F2 data. So what I'm going to do is animate the graph, right? So to animate a graph, use uh, these data lists. 
Uh, so that's what this is. And, and here, that, all this does right here is to uh, fill in the data list. So I go through uh, F1 data, I go through the length of, the, of X, which is just four points, right? But it's fun to do it the, the real way so that if, it, if I wanna make it more complicated later, I could. So I just add my X and Y values to the list. Uh, I, and they're two different things, right? Because the red are just dots and the other one's a curve. So I didn't have to do it that way. I could have done something different, but I wanted them different colors. Uh, and then I just, this just plots those two data. So that's all it did. And then I set my, my velocities. That's all I've done so far. So what I need to do now is to make a function that calculates the time it takes to get through everything. Because when I make a new path, I need to calculate the times, right? Okay, so let's make a Python function. Is this big enough? I feel like it's not quite big enough. Let's move this over a little bit like that. Let's stretch this out. Okay. So let's make a function. Again, if you need, if you need help with Python functions, uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm going to call this just capital T. And, and what parameters I'm going to give it? I could just give it the Y values because the X's don't change. But I'm going to give it the X list and the Y list. And I don't want to use the same name. So I'm going to call it XX and YY. And I'll put a comment. This function calculates the time to go to get to Y3. Does that make sense? Okay. So what I'm going to do is to calculate the three individual times and add it to the total. Um, and so I need to first calculate that distance S1. So let's calculate S1. S1 is going to be equal to the square root of y1 minus y0 squared. So I can say y1 minus y0 quantity squared plus x1 minus x0 quantity squared. So that's S1. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate all the S's. So I'm just going to copy this stuff. Copy, paste, and let's make this S2 is going to be from 1 to 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2. And just a reminder, this, you know, you see this up here. Y1 is the second element in the Y list. So up here, it'd be start off at 0. Uh, y0 is the first element in the list. Up here, this list, this, this up here goes through, has I go from 0 to 3. And then I can just index the things that way. And I'm going to need to do that uh, in another, another case. And now I need to change this to S2. And then I need one more. It's going to go from 2 to 3. So 2, 3, 2, 3. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the time. T1 is just going to be S1 over V1. T2 is S2 divided by V2. T3 is S3 divided by V3. And then I'm going to return, the function is going to return the total value. So I'm going to say return the total time T1 plus T2 plus T3. Let's just see if this works. So I'm going to say uh, print start time, start t equals the function t, I'm going to give it the, the list x and the list y. That should work. And it didn't. Can't find s3 because I didn't name it that. That's okay. Making mistakes is just part of, so that it takes 4.86 seconds to get across. And that seems to make sense, right? I'm going from uh, here to there, different speeds, about one meter per second, uh, a little bit, but I also have to go up. So the total distance, th this seems realistic. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, so what are we gonna do next? Next, I want to, uh, I wanna iterate. I'm gonna make another list, I have another loop. So let's do this. I'm gonna say, n equals 100, n equals 0. This is my favorite way to count. You, there are other ways to count, but I like this because it makes the most sense. So now I can say while n is less than n, uh, rate, let's do rate of 50. This so I can animate it. And then I'm going to say n equals n plus 1. So that's going to uh, add 1 to the value and so I can do the loop 50 times. 
So it's a good way to count. Now, and the rate just means it won't go too fast. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I wanna animate the graph. So I need to clear the data, the data before I graph it. So I can say F1 data is empty and F2 data is empty, right? Every time I get back, I'm gonna clear the data and then replot it. Now what I'm gonna do is to make a new value, a new list value. And I only have two data points, right? I only have two things I'm gonna change. So I'm just gonna do it manually. Uh, so instead, because I'd have to go from over the list, but not change the first or the last point, because those are set. So let's just say y, uh, y new one. Actually, I guess I do, I don't have, uh, let's just put it up here. I, I, don't, I don't have a y one, right? Because y is just empty. So let's just put zero, 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 three. Yeah, because they're at zero. That's fine. Uh, so down here, y1, y new 1 is going to be the uh, the old the old y1. The old, so it's going to be y1 plus a random number because I'm making the new value. So the random number, I want it to go between plus or minus 0.1 uh, in the y direction. We could change that. So to do that, uh, in GlowScript vPython, we have the random function that returns a number between 0 and 1. So if I say plus uh, 0 0.2 times random, that'll be between 0 and 0.2. And then if I say minus point, 0 0.1, now it'll be from, the max will be 0 0.1, the minimum will be negative 0 0.1. So it'll either go up or down 0.1. And now I'm going to do the same thing for y new 2. y new 2, the second data point, is y2 plus 0 0.2 times random, not random 0, random minus 0 0.1. Okay, so that's going to make new values. Now what I need to do is to compare the time for y new and y, which is the old. So let's just do that all in one fell swoop. If the time for x, y new is less than the time for x, y, then I'm going to set my, my y value to my y new value. Now you can't set the list equal to each other because they will always be equal to each other. You gotta set each item equal to each other, which is a little weird. So I'm gonna do this. For i in uh, range length of x, because they're all the same, uh, I'm gonna say y i equals y new i. So that'll just go through and update it. Now, it only does that if the time is less. If the time is greater, then it's just like, fine, not gonna do anything. Okay, now what I need to do is to, uh, I need to plot my new function, or the same, it may not have moved. So I can just go up here to my plot. This is my plot right here. I'm just gonna do this. It's the same thing, right? I need to do that for my plot. Uh, that needs to be indented. And then I need to actually plot the data. So I'll say f1.data equals f1data, f2.data equals f2data. Um, that should be it. Uh, and then I increment in. And let's go ahead and print out uh, the final time. Print t final, cause it, just to see if it's less, right? t final equals, again, t x, y. And x and y, remember, are lists, they're lists. Okay, do you think this is gonna run? What do you think? Let's go up here, I should save it. I didn't even give it a name. Um, variational time, random number, save. Okay, now let's run this thing. Okay, it didn't do anything. Oh no, it didn't plot it though. It didn't change anything. Okay, I made a mistake somewhere. That's fine. That's just a greater opportunity to have some fun here. Okay, so that's my function that returns it. n equals zero uh, if t x y new is less than t x y, then set the new one equal to that, and then plot it. Y new one is y1 plus 0.2 random 
minus 0.1. Hmm. But they didn't do anything. I in range, this is just graphing, but it didn't, it didn't change it at all. Y I equals Y new I for I in length. Okay, that's good. X T X Y new less than T X Y. What the heck? Random, random. 0.2 times random minus 0.1. Okay, well, let's just, I'm gonna try Try my other favorite trick. Because I was working on this before. Let's just. What's different? I don't see what's different. But I'm going to run it. It didn't do anything. Why is it not doing anything? Okay, so that means that the error should be up here. Uh. Oh, I got the V1. The time is returning the same thing, so the T function's fine. What's, let's do this. Is it not even going to, through the loop? Print, let's print Y. Let's just see what happens there. So the Y never changed, it never changed. Let's print Y new. It does change. So it is changing. So I think this is my problem right here. But no. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to show you my other program. I know I can get this to work. So I, I did. I did. I worked it out beforehand. And I just wanted to remake it, you know. I don't I'm not sure what my actual error is. This one does work though. Okay, so let me run this one. I don't see the difference here. It's some something dumb, and I don't want to waste my time uh, finding that dumb error. It's just strange. Okay. So let's run this one. You can see what it does. So that, that worked. And it did give a smaller time. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's... Uh, this is for 500 points. I ran it kind of fast. Let's run a little bit slower so you can see what happens. So you can see they're kind of shaking up and down, right? Um, this one could actually move down if the other one moved up enough to, to decrease the time. I don't know that this is the exact solution, but you'll notice that it doesn't do anything for a while because it's cha making changes, but they're not better than it was before until it finally gets done in prints. We kn I know one thing. If the velocities are all the same, then the line should be straight. And I can check that really quickly. So let's go over here and say uh, V, this is 1, and this is 1. And it should be a straight, not 1, 1. It should just be a straight line. And it, and it is. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, now let's just try something, something fun here. 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.8. 1.2 so the, the speeds get faster and faster and faster as they go on and again that makes sense right because as i'm pretty happy with this as uh it since this last region is so much faster then you want to get to it as fast as possible and then increase your distance upwards that way so overall i'm pretty happy with this and you can imagine what would it be like if there were like an whole bunch of points would have had a whole bunch of different velocities and in fact I've done a problem like this for the uh, the shortest uh, the shortest time path between two points and I think I might redo that with this jiggling problem before I did I varied one uh, problem one mass at each time I really like this jiggle method I'm going to call it the jiggle method uh, for variational principle by just brute force calculating it Okay, so that'll be another another video. Uh, I'll include the code down below. Hope you found this useful. Sorry for the error. I'm not sure what the error is. Someone will probably point out, hey, you, you left a comma off or whatever, and that's probably what happened. But, but you can see it does work. All right, that's that.